Welcome to AP Physics 2 Video 1 Cram Session for the uh, AP test. And uh, these videos are just going to be talking concepts and uh, might be a little bit rougher than the normal videos that I produce, but I wanted to create these to help everyone study for the AP 2 test. So what I've done is I've gone through the curriculum and I've identified some things that may help you out. First of all, electroscope. Let's start talking about that. Well, you have a, a metal ball connected to a, a post and there will be leaves here that I'm going to draw in. What effect would uh, moving a negative rod up to an electroscope have? Okay, well, let's uh, take a look at that. The uh, negative rod is going to scare electrons on this metal sphere down the pole, okay, into the metal leaves then. And you should see then that the metal leaves will part. And the reason is we're going to make both of those negative. Okay, and then since the electrons got scared away from here, this will result in a positive. Now, what if I am to take this rod away? Okay, well, the entire effect of this will then go back to uh, what it was before. The leaves are going to then uh, go inward. As this charge, the electrons go up here, I'm re reducing all of this to a neutral charge again. Okay, so this is an example of induction. Induction is when charges result, but you don't really come in contact, okay, with the object at all. And uh, let's take a look about another example. What if we do the same kind of thing, except we do it with a, a positive? So we bring a positive rod up. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's see here now. I'll move the positive rod up here. And what's that going to do? Well, that'll attract electrons up to the metal sphere from the leaves below. So then we'll get negative charges on top here and uh, resulting in positive charges in the leaves. And uh, once again, we'll see the leaves uh, separate. They'll part from each other because we've done another induced charge, the positive attracting electrons up. We've never actually come in contact with it. So let's uh, take that positive rod away, and what we'll witness is these charges going away again as the leaves then collapse as it was before. So positives and negatives gone away because the electrons will then go back down, neutralizing everything. So notice we see uh, another example of induction. We don't actually come in contact with the uh, metal sphere. And, and temporary induction at that. And notice how a negative rod induces uh, a positive in the sphere, but a positive rod induces a negative in the sphere because uh, it's, again, just moving charges. We don't actually come in contact with it. Now let's continue. Let's say uh, we take the rod and actually take the negative rod and uh, bring it really close and then we actually physically come in contact with it. Okay, here we're going to transfer electrons across. So we'll see electrons come across from the rod. I'll just show a little arrow jumping over here. And negatives will then go everywhere. Thus, the leaves will then pick up a negative and negative charges as they transfer across. And then when we take the rod away, okay, we see that a negative has been left behind here because we have given negative charges over to the electroscope. And, and this is a permanent charge, and uh, it's called conduction. Because we actually conducted the charge across, we physically came in contact with the object. Now what if I do the same with a positive rod? So let's go ahead and do that and bring the positive rod up and actually physically come in contact with the electroscope and uh, what's going to happen here electrons on the metal sphere are going to now jump from the metal sphere onto the rod so i'm going to do like that and because we're going to be losing electrons from this whole system here the plates will go apart as a positive charge results everywhere Okay, and then uh, I will remove the rod away from it. Okay, I'll just leave that arrow there. And all this is going to stay now because one more time we have conducted a charge. And uh, in this case, a positive charge. So notice how a negative rod conducts a negative charge because it gives electrons across. And a positive rod conducts a, a, a positive charge as electrons jump from the sphere, okay, to the actual rod. Now one more time... 
you know, think about this because it's the electrons that actually move in each of these situations. We're not moving protons. Those are the heavy particles inside the nucleus, and uh, the electrons are the ones buzzing around outside. So in any case, whether you charge something by friction, by conduction or induction, you're moving electrons. So uh, the rod, the negative rod that I showed you was probably charged by uh, friction between fur and the plastic rod. And what occurs there is electrons are lost by the fur by friction and they go onto the plastic uh, rod. The positive rod is actually glass and silk and uh, basically you rub the glass rod with the silk and electrons are removed from the glass rod and go to the silk leaving behind a positively charged rod. So in any case, notice how its electrons are always moving, whether it's charging, friction, whatever you use to charge it. Now once charges occur, now let's take a look at a situation here. How do insulators differ from uh, conductors when they're charged? Well, let's say I have a, a red sphere, and this is plastic, and I've got two other objects that are metal. This is a metal sphere, and then this is a hollow metal sphere. So let's go back to the example where a negative rod were to touch this object. So if I have a conductor, I'm, I touch this object, let's say here, I'm going to notice a, a bunch of negative charges just piling up here. And, and because this is a, a, an insulator, we're not going to see those charges move too quickly around this because remember, you know, insulators don't let charges go through them too easily. So we're going to get a localized region of negative here in some distribution. But what if I touch the uh, conductor here, a metal conductor? So let's say I deposit an electron here or so. And what's going to happen is I continue to deposit electrons. They're going to quickly get away from each other. And they are going to arrange each other all around evenly. And likewise, if I touch a hollow sphere like this, the electrons will move around because it's a conductor. Electrons don't like each other and they'll get away from each other as far as possible. And that's what we see, electrons just kind of going everywhere. Now let's talk one more time about electric field. You know, you probably learned that, that this year too. Electric field as it relates to um, metal conductors. Uh, just a couple general ideas in my next video. We'll talk more specifically. Remember, electric field always terminates on negatives and, um, and begins on positives. So let me just do an arrow here then. If I want to show electric field for this, I'll show electric field lines coming in where those charges exist. Of course, remember, electric field lines are not real. They're uh, parallel or tangent okay, to the electric force line. They start on positives and they end on negatives. They're perpendicular okay, to the surface. Okay, and remember, they are also in indicative of the charge. They should be somewhat proportional okay to the charge and uh, also remember that electric field lines don't cross okay so those are good reminders for you so if this is a negative charge the uh, electric field lines are all pointing inward towards it then a reminder inside of a hollow uh, sphere uh, the electric field is uh, zero there is no electric field inside this right here okay and uh, likewise inside this piece of metal electric field inside metal is zero so notice how the shell here is zero inside here electric field would be zero and inside a hollow space electric field is zero but just outside electric field is some value and remember that the charge for uh, metal conductors is always residing on the outside surface it's not on the inside surface at all so those are some good reminders and let's talk why if an electron here decided it wants to go inside it's just going to get repelled right back out again and that, that would be our reason why. Okay, that's it for video one. We'll talk more in video two.